Hello, you're watching the Auto Advisor channel. Have you ever wondered how a turbocharger works? But before we dive into that, let's go back in time to where it all began. The year is 1905, and a Swiss engineer by the name of Alfred Bucci is making history. He receives a patent for a concept that would revolutionize the automotive world, the use of a turbine as a drive for an automobile. Yet the first tangible manifestation of this concept wouldn't come to life until much later, in 1939. An American designer, Charles F. Kettering, heeds the call of innovation and creates the first prototype of a turbine car. This powerhouse of a vehicle boasts a power of 120 horsepower, reaching speeds of up to 90 miles per hour. As the 1950s roll around, this technology begins to catch the eyes of major automakers. Chrysler, Rover, Fiat, and Renault these giants in the industry saw potential in the turbine car and conducted various experiments and tests. However, their aspirations for commercial success were met with challenges. The high cost of these vehicles, the difficulty in maintaining them, and their high fuel consumption proved to be significant hurdles that they couldn't quite overcome. Fast forward to the present day, turbine cars may be considered exotic and rare, but their potential continues to captivate enthusiasts and researchers. These vehicles, powered by the same technology that propels jet engines, offer a glimpse into a future where cars are more efficient, more powerful, and more thrilling to drive. The journey of the turbocharger, from its birth to its current state, is a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of progress. It's a story of trials and triumphs, of setbacks and comebacks, as we delve deeper into the workings of the turbocharger in the next scenes, remember this. Every component, every process, every revolution of the turbine is a part of this incredible saga that started over a century ago. Fast forward to the present day, turbine cars may be considered exotic and rare, but their potential continues to captivate enthusiasts and researchers. Now that we know where turbochargers originated, let's delve into understanding how they work. Imagine a car turbine as a device that capitalizes on exhaust gas energy to give your engine a power boost. It's a nifty piece of machinery that operates on a simple yet effective principle. This automotive powerhouse comprises two main components, the compressor and the turbine. The compressor's role is to compress the air entering the engine, subsequently increasing its pressure and temperature. This supercharged air is then ready to be used by the engine allowing it to burn more fuel and produce more power. On the other side, we have the turbine. This device cleverly converts the energy of the exhaust gases exiting the engine into mechanical work. This energy is then transferred to the compressor via a shared shaft, setting the compressor in motion. So how does this process unfold? Let's break it down into four distinct phases. Intake, compression, expansion, and exhaust. During the intake phase, air is sucked into the compressor inlet via an air filter. This filtered air is then compressed in the second phase. The compressor's vanes give the air a rotational motion, thereby increasing its pressure. Next, we move on to the expansion phase. Here, the exhaust gases from the engine are introduced into the turbine inlet. As these gases expand, they transfer their energy to the turbine blades, setting the turbine in motion. Finally, in the exhaust phase, the now depleted exhaust gases exit the turbine. They are then released into the atmosphere through the vehicle's exhaust pipe, completing the cycle and making way for the next batch of air and exhaust gases. This intricate process enables the turbine to increase engine power by enhancing the degree of air filling in the cylinders and reducing the resistance of the exhaust system. Essentially, the turbine increases engine power by enhancing the degree of air filling in the cylinders and reducing the resistance of the exhaust system. Knowing how a turbocharger works is important, but equally crucial is recognizing when it's not functioning properly. So, let's delve into the telltale signs of a malfunctioning turbocharger. Firstly, you might notice reduced power and vehicle dynamics. This can be a clear indication that your turbocharger isn't delivering the boost it should. Similarly, if your engine isn't picking up speed as promptly as it usually does, it's another red flag. Next, pay attention to what you hear. 
Unusual sounds, particularly at idle speed, can be symptomatic of a turbocharger on the fritz. If your vehicle's speed fluctuates jerkily, this can also be a sign of trouble. These symptoms can be subtle, so it's important to stay vigilant. Changes in exhaust gas color can also signal a malfunction. If the exhaust gases turn black, blue, or even bluish, it's likely due to oil in them, another sign your turbocharger might be failing. Unpleasant odors of burning in the passenger compartment and frequent overheating of the power unit are not to be ignored either. Lastly, if you've noticed an increase in fuel and oil consumption, it could very well be a malfunctioning turbocharger causing it. Being aware of these signs can help you detect a malfunctioning turbocharger early and prevent further engine damage. The next logical question to ask is, why do turbochargers break down? Turbochargers, just like any other mechanical components, are not immune to malfunction, and there are several factors that can lead to their demise. Firstly, overheating is a common culprit. If the engine is consistently running at high revs without adequate cooling, the engine oil can overheat, which can, in turn, lead to turbocharger failure. It's like trying to run a marathon in scorching heat without taking a sip of water. Secondly, the quality of lubricant also plays a significant role. Lower quality lubricants can lead to the formation of carbon deposits in the turbocharger. These solid particles can easily wreak havoc on the bearings, leading to failure. It's like trying to slide down a sandpaper slide without any padding. Thirdly, let's talk about fuel. Low-quality diesel and gasoline can cause the formation of heavy carbon deposits, which reduces the efficiency of the engine. It's like trying to light a fire with wet wood. It just doesn't work as well. And lastly, we can't overlook mechanical damage. This is often caused by contaminants, predominantly dirt and dust, which can enter the turbocharger from the intake manifold. Therefore, regular air filter changes are as crucial as oil changes. To prolong the life of your turbocharger, it's important to avoid overheating, use high-quality lubricant and fuel, and regularly change the air filter. It's all about prevention, care, and maintenance. In the world of car enthusiasts, it's a common misconception that turbochargers significantly increase fuel consumption. After all, it seems logical. More power, more fuel consumption, right? However, the reality is a bit different. Turbochargers actually help in reducing fuel consumption due to their ability to enhance engine efficiency. For example, in a non-turbocharged car, you might need 10 liters of fuel to cover 100 kilometers, but with a turbocharger, you may only need up to 7 liters. The turbocharger achieves this by increasing pressure, which in turn increases the power output to the wheels. But there is always a but. In case of a turbocharger malfunction, the engine system can fail, leading to increased fuel consumption. Imagine trying to climb a steep hill or drive at high speeds on the highway with a faulty turbocharger. The result? A significant increase in fuel consumption. This happens because during rapid acceleration, some of the fuel can end up in the exhaust pipe causing wastage. So, is it good or bad to have a turbocharger in your car? Well, there's no clear-cut answer. A turbocharger can help reduce fuel consumption, lower emissions, and enhance acceleration dynamics. However, it also demands more maintenance, increases the strain on the engine, and can cause overheating or detonation. Plus, there's the issue of turbo lag, a delay in power delivery and turbo kick, a sudden surge in power, both of which can affect driving comfort. In the end, it's all about how you maintain your turbocharger and your driving style. It's like maintaining a delicate balance between power and efficiency, speed and fuel consumption. And remember, in the automobile world, there's no such thing as a free lunch.